Hey Badgers, today we're joined by Dr. Herji, Niagara Region's Acting Medical Officer of Health, who's going to be answering some of the top frequently asked questions by Brock students about COVID-19. Dr. Herji, thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule and joining us today. Let's get into our first question. I've heard mixed information about mixing the vaccines Moderna and Pfizer. Can you explain it to me? First off, it's important to recognize that Moderna and Pfizer are basically actually the same product. It's basically just two different brand names on the same product. They're both vaccines are based on the same technology. They have the identical safety, identical performance in clinical trials. They work exactly the same way. It's like two different brands of bottled water. You can swap one for the other and no one's gonna know any of the difference. And you can actually switch the vaccines likewise. It's actually very common for us to vaccinate a person with a first dose using one product for other diseases and then a different product for the second dose. Measles, mumps, rubella vaccine, very common vaccine we all get when we are children. That's actually one of these ones where there's multiple companies making that vaccine. And you quite routinely get one product for your first dose and actually then a different brand name product for the second dose, but it's the same vaccine. And actually by design in Ontario, now your first dose is measles, mumps, rubella. Your second dose is a combined measles, mumps, rubella, and varicella vaccine. So it actually is by design actually going to be a different product and that's completely normal. Hepatitis B is another one where you get two or three doses of vaccine and you may actually get two or actually three different products. And again, it's completely okay because all the vaccines work the same. It's just a different company putting their own brand on it and you're just getting three, two or three different doses of the same, prod, uh, same vaccine, just with a different name on it. And that's exactly gonna be what's happening here. Moderna and Pfizer are the, really the same vaccine, just a different company, put a different brand name on it. We've for some reason been very hyper-focused on Pfizer and Moderna and AstraZeneca and the different companies making COVID-19 vaccines, but we actually really don't pay attention to who's the brand name for your measles, mumps, rubella vaccine, your hepatitis vaccine, or any other vaccine. So, you know, in the next little while, we're going to get lots and lots of Moderna vaccine in Canada. In previous months, we had lots and lots of Pfizer vaccine. So a lot of people who maybe got a first dose with Pfizer are going to get a second dose with Moderna. And that's A-OK, -okay, and it's actually great because it means more people are going to be able to get that second dose of vaccine and get their full protection and be safe from COVID-19 faster than possible. And at the end of the day, that's what we want to get protected from this virus as quickly as we possibly can. How do I best look after myself after getting a shot? So after you've had a vaccine, it is somewhat common for people to have some small uh, symptoms right at the place they're injected. So getting a bit of pain, a little of redness, a bit of swelling, that's very common. You know, upwards of 40% of people probably get that. And you don't really need to do anything around that. You just you know, put a little bit of ice on if you feel it helps, but you can do really nothing. And it's all gonna go away. Aside from that, there's really nothing else to worry about after your vaccination. If you do start to feel a little bit of achy or if they have fevers, that's also somewhat normal. Some people unfortunately do experience that. That's really a sign your immune system's revving up. Just take it slow, keep doing as much as you feel like doing, and you're good to go. I have allergies and I'm afraid to get the vaccine. So one of the nice things about the vaccines we're using in Canada is that there are very few uh, ingredients that can cause allergic reactions. The Moderna and the Pfizer vaccine are really the only vaccines that we're using right now because they're the most effective vaccines and the safest vaccines we have in Canada. And unless you have an allergy to polyethylene glycol or triomethamine, you don't need to really worry about an allergic reaction. You're not gonna have any allergy to that. Those chemicals are actually pretty uncommon. They occur in some uh, contrast dye used when you get medical imaging done, but very few people actually even have allergic reactions to them. I think it's on the order of under 10 people in the world have been documented to have allergic reactions to them. When you come to clinic, you'll get your shot. We always keep people waiting 15 minutes after just on the off chance that they do have an allergic reaction. So if you do have that reaction, we're there available to help treat that reaction and make sure you're good before you leave clinic. Our next question, which vaccine do you recommend getting or deem is the safest? So the best vaccines that have been developed against COVID-19 are the Moderna vaccine and the Pfizer vaccine. They're actually just about equally effective. They're both very safe. Very uh, few people have any kind of serious side effects to them. We've not seen any kind of major uh, um, safety issues coming out of either of those vaccines. 
We're actually very lucky in Canada that we have access to these vaccines. They are sort of the Cadillac of vaccines out there. They're the most expensive. And actually only a small number of countries now in the world have been able to afford to get these vaccines. So, you know, when you come to clinic, you'll almost certainly be getting one of those vaccines. Either one of them is great. They're basically they're based on the same technology. You're basically buying two brand, different brand, or you're getting two different brand names of the same vaccine. So either one of those is going to give you the best possible protection as well as give you the fewest side effects. If I've had COVID-19, how long do I have to wait to get the vaccine? So after you've had COVID uh, illness, we do see some people are actually getting reinfected with COVID, particularly as we get new variants where the virus has mutated and evolved a bit. Sometimes your past infection doesn't give you complete protection against these new variants. And just regardless, we're finding actually the vaccine gives you better protection than actually having had the infection. We know that's true actually of a few different infections out there, or you develop vaccines that are better at giving you an immune response than the infection itself. So we definitely recommend if you've had COVID-19 in the past, you should get the vaccine. You can actually get the vaccine as soon as you come out of isolation for your illness. So the day after your illness is resolved, you're no longer in isolation, you can go out and get the vaccine. Our next question is, I've heard heart inflammation is a potential side effect. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, so there's two kinds of heart inflammation that we're concerned about. One is called myocarditis, which is actually the muscle of the heart getting inflamed a little bit. And then there's pericarditis, which is the lining around the heart and that becoming inflamed. These conditions are actually relatively common after someone has had infection. And in fact, after getting COVID-19 infection, it's quite common that people will actually get uh, myocarditis or pericarditis. Uh, with the vaccine, we do see that when the vaccine revs up your immune system to give you some immunity, it does in a small number of people seem to be causing myocarditis or pericarditis. It does seem to be causing that inflammation of the heart as a side effect. Really important to note that it's actually a very small number of people who are getting this. I think it's under 1% of people who've gotten the vaccine have been documented to actually get this. For almost everybody who's got it, you unfortunately get symptoms, which is usually some uh, heart uh, pain. It of course feels quite worrying when you have that, but it actually goes away on its own after a few days. You can take some painkillers for it to get better. There's been very few people who've actually needed any kind of serious medical support. We're talking maybe 20 to 30 people in the entire world who've needed that kind of level of support. If you do get the vaccine, you do have some kinds of chest pain, you have trouble breathing, anything like that. Please do see your healthcare provider so they can check to see if it is this, and that way we can make sure we give you the proper treatment for it. The good news is that it's, of course, very rare, and it's actually much less likely you'll get this than you would actually get myocarditis or pericarditis after you get COVID-19 infection. So you definitely want to get the vaccine because that's going to give you less risk of getting the side effect, and of course, give you the protection from all the other impacts of COVID-19. Moving on to the next question. Will the vaccines protect me from the variants? So the Moderna and Pfizer vaccine, one of the reasons they're really considered the best vaccines out there is that they continue to provide really good protection against the variants. Now it isn't quite as good as it was against the version of COVID-19 we had about eight or nine months ago. Uh, eight or nine months ago, we're seeing that these vaccines were about 95% effective. Now it's close to maybe around 88% effective, but that's really good still and it's actually better than any of the other vaccines out there on the market. One key element, though, is that to get that protection, you really do need to get both doses of the vaccine. Against the Delta variant, you only get about 32% protection with one dose, but it gets up to that 88% once you get both doses. So the key thing is that after you get that first dose, make sure three to four weeks later you come back and get that second dose so you have all the protection that the vaccine is going to give you. If I was fully vaccinated with the Sinopharm vaccine before arriving in Canada, Will I need to be revaccinated with the Government of Canada approved vaccine to be recognized as vaccinated against COVID-19? Also, is it safe to mix Sinopharm with these vaccines? So if you've gotten another vaccine in a different country, not one of the vaccines we're using in Canada, we don't really know what the rules are going to be going forward. Is that vaccine going to be recognized or not? One thing I can say from a medical perspective though, is that the Moderna, the Pfizer vaccine are really the best vaccines out there. So if you've got a different vaccine, something like Sputnik V, Sinopharm, CanSino, 
those vaccines aren't actually as good as the Moderna or Pfizer vaccine. And so for that reason, I would definitely recommend you do get the Moderna or Pfizer vaccine while you're here. So you make sure you get the best protection possible, especially with the new variants coming up, things like the Delta variant. Those other vaccines really aren't protecting as well, whereas Moderna and Pfizer do seem to have maintained their protection. So I'd recommend you get these vaccines. Take the opportunity, it's going to be free while you're here, and that way you get the best protection possible. And in case any rules come around and you, you know, your other vaccine wasn't recognized, this one will be recognized. If you had those other vaccines, you don't need to worry about getting the Moderna or Pfizer vaccine. It's not going to interfere, it's just going to give you the added protection from getting this additional vaccine. Once again, thank you for joining us Dr. Herji and answering these questions. Badgers, if you have any more questions about COVID-19, be sure to contact the COVID-19 nurse at brocky.ca and book your vaccine through the link in the bio.